Greetings and welcome to the show, Inspiring Black Math Geniuses, where we are focused and dedicated on helping you become the best parent you can and to inspire the Black Math Geniuses in your home. My name is Freddie Taylor, uh, and I am joined with Sister Asada Moore. Sister Asada, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. How are you, Freddie? I am great. I am great and ready to have another one of these great inspiring discussion centered around inspiring black math geniuses today yes, yes. we are talking about the belief slope uh can we get into that a little bit sister give us a warm-up on what do you mean by the belief slope oh man uh we talk about an achievement gap i like to say that there is a belief gap and people don't but here's the harsher thing i'll say people but let's get right to it parents don't believe in the genius of their own children, mm. right? And you know what people believe in based on their actions. And so that's that's what we're speaking about today. It's 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 this belief slope, you know, what what parents believe and what schools and others believe versus what black children can actually do. There's a wide gap, and you you all see the graph and shirt that I have on, right? Right. So these these slopes are, are getting away from each other. Right. And they're they're diverging away from each other. And what that does is that it pulls our children down. Imagine, Freddie, you're on a you're on a race. You're trained. You're doing your best and you're ready. But then you go up there and show up. You believe in yourself. And they, oh, wait, hold on. We're going to put a couple of weights on you. And you're like, all right, I can deal with the weights. Let me go ahead and do what I got to do. And you start running. And then all of a sudden some hands just kind of holding you back while you're trying to run, right? right? That's a lot of times what our children are going through in schools. Mm. Not only do they have the weight of the school system that does not believe in them, but instead of having that pushing hand from parents that say, yeah, baby, you got this, you can do this, so on and so forth, it's almost as if they're holding them back as well. And, they're, and the child is confused by that because the parents are supposed to be the ones having their back. Wow, wow. So we, we, we're, we're sabotaging our own children in a way. By not believing in them. Not and here's how I know that we don't believe in them. What do we, show me what research, what data shows that children having an iPhone, an iPad, all the technology that they have benefits them academically in the long term. Mm. Right? It's not there. Wow. Show me where material items, the nice clothing, going out. Our children eat crab like how we ate, you know, <laughs> crackers. <laughs> Spam, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, so think about where, where we're putting our resources versus where we can be putting our resources. Because if you look at your child, you'd be like, man, this kid is going to be something. Right. Let me help develop that. Right it would be a totally different outlook. Right. That's and so we can have the conversation all day and the parents would love to have that conversation about what the schools aren't doing. But the schools aren't doing what you're allowing them to not do. Yeah, we're supporting their inept behavior, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and we have to ask, you know, do we ourselves think that black children are stupid? Are we accepting less from them because we don't believe that they're capable of any more than what they're giving us? Right. And like the actions seem to say, right? Because we are low expectations. Low expectations. Only, yeah, in the world but in general, right? But especially in mathematics. You, you were talking about uh, math as an indicator of achievement. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, a lot of people view mathematics as an indicator of achievement. And it is the, you know, it is the, the, the poster child of the subjects, right? It's the one that causes the most anxiety and the most fear. And so those that accomplish it are seen as what, right? And so just for myself, I was able to use my mathematics degree to advance to places that other people could. And I became a principal just by having a mathematics degree. Never took any teacher's courses. People value mathematics. Mathematics teachers are paid more, right? But here's the thing. That's just one form of intelligence. Yes, it's an important one. Yes, it works with the brain differently, it allows thinking, and of course I love it and value it. But the first thing to realize is that your children are gonna have different types of geniuses in them. There are many different types of intelligences. 
besides the logical one. What we're saying with the Black Map Genius Program is that our children are capable of much more than what we're giving them. And if they have some base level line of success mathematically, whatever their talent is, it will amplify that. Okay. They would just go, well, they won't just be a good artist. They would be a fantastic artist. Yes. Right. And so if you look at there, there's this restaurant here in Chicago, average about $800 a person to eat there. What this guy is doing is brilliant. He's bringing in the art world into food and creating this engaging experience. But guess who put him on to that? His parents had a restaurant and his uncle mixed some pickles and some French fries that piqued his interest, right? And they invested in him going into culinary school, so on and so forth. But I need parents to understand the importance of their role in their child's education and what you all are showing us right now, hopefully those of us that are, those that are listening to this podcast, those that have been following us aren't in that boat, but I would still say that you can do more with saying, hey, I'm going to make sure that I nurture the inner genius in my child. Yeah, that, of course, that that's those are other parents, right? Not these parents that are. Not these parents, right. Yeah, not these not parents these. are going to tell the other parents they need to get here. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> They're focused. They understand that math is the blackest thing ever. Uh, and they know they want they want to help build their children to the next level. So they want to join the Black Math Genius Program. Can you tell them why they should do that, Sister Estada? Yeah, I mean, it it helps with that belief gap. When parents can see what's possible they even start to change their belief system as well. So the Black Map Genius Program says to your children, here, look at all of the things that you can do, how you can take mathematics and apply it to whatever it is that you love and what you're passionate about. And it is the blackest thing ever because mathematics was discovered first, discovered and used first by black women on the continent of Africa. So your people, people that look like you gave the world mathematics. Absolutely, beautiful. Y'all make sure y'all join us inside the Black Math Genius Program. You can sign up today with a great offer at blackmathgenius.com. That's blackmathgenius.com. See you on the inside. Okay, sister, let's go ahead and wrap the show uh, with your thoughts on, um, you know, I, I see positive slow versus negative slow when we're talking about um, what our children can do versus what parents believe uh, is possible for them. How how does this come together? Yeah. So the, the the positive slope. I mean, it's a it's amazing what the children can do and where they can go. But the trajectory that society has on black children is a negative slope. It's either stagnant or it's negative, right? And so what I'm getting at is that when you remove those negative beliefs whether you believe you have them or not, your actions will tell if you have them or not, right? But when you allow your children to go, and with your support, they will take off like a rocket. Yes. And so I get an example of that. I've had students as early as second grade that I'm able to break calculus down to. And they're able to tell me what calculus is and do at least two or three derivatives, okay? Now, for me to even introduce them to that concept says that I believe that they can do it, right? And they feel that I believe that they can do it, so they try it. When you don't believe something, when you fear something, you don't even attempt it. So there are young children that can do, you, we see these articles that come across Facebook. This young child that just got into Georgia State University, only 13 years old. If you look at all of those children that got into those key spots like that, Freddie, what they have in common, parents. Yes. Parents that are on them, reading to them early, doing mathematics with them early. We have parents asking, how soon should we start doing the mathematics program? Y'all start reading when they're still in the belly, right? Right. So why not start counting and doing the mathematics when they're still in the belly? They so as early as possible, Children pick up so much more than what we believe they're capable of. And we're doing this based on what we think that we're capable of. Let them go. I, I, I love that because, you know, I just think about, I think about like TikTok and the videos and, you know, they got babies in there dancing. 
You know, when yeah. it comes to entertainment and goofing around, it's like we got a high belief in our children. But yes. it's, where's that belief when it comes to mathematics, right? Um, Absolutely. It should be there, right? These are the yes. that birth mathematics in the world. We still are. Uh, that intelligent being, but we just got to get. And that's an excellent point. Excellent example, because that goes into the stereotype that we talk about in the webinar, right? Yes. Stereotype us into entertainers and athletes. Yes. So we're doing those things. Oh, the five-year-old that's shooting these three-pointers, blah, blah, blah. We're loving that. Millions of views. <laughs> right. And it says something about what we believe in and what we share. It does. It does. We got to change that mindset, but it's hopefully Absolutely. with shows like this and engagements like like we put on and other people that are doing it around the world, I think we're going to start making some progress, right? We can't, Absolutely. We can't go down from here, right? We got to go <laughs> up. Our, our slope has to be positive because we believe, right? We believe in our future. We believe in our children. We believe Absolutely. in ourselves. I think that's a pretty good spot to close out this particular uh, episode on. Uh, the belief slope, right? So let's make sure that we're getting behind our children and really pushing them. Um, you got any last words before we, we uh, close out? Um, Sister Sada, you want to end on anything on that one? Hey, you, be you believe in your children and you want some help. Maybe you don't quite know how to go about getting pulling out that Black Math Genius in. Well, that's why we have the Black Math Genius program to help you do just that. Um, the programming in it is, is cold. We're adding more to it as time goes on. So check it out and help your child educe, bring out their inner genius. Yes, I love it. Thank you, sister. Appreciate it. Thank y'all for joining us uh, the Black Math, Inspiring Black Math Genius Show. We'll see you next time uh, uh, here on the Inspiring Black Math Genius Show. Until then, love, peace, and Black power, good people. But hey, while I have you here, can you do me a favor and grab our mobile app uh, you can grab it, raise it, search Raising Proud Black Children in the Google Play Store or the iPhone App Store, or you can just jump into sankofaclub.com slash app and download the Raising Proud Black Children app. Until next time, good people, love, peace, and Black power.